Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. In this podcast, we like to tackle the CNC industry specifically and really talk a little bit about business in general. Hopefully, you'll find some entertainment throughout it and, and hopefully some education. But the next episode starts right now. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I am your host, Brandon Bombardo, here with Nick Peters. Hello, Brandon. How are you? Oh, well, I'm good for the second try today. Uh, <laughs> got some guests here with us. We got Sam and Connor from Geneva Capital. Guys, how you doing? Good. Yeah, great thanks for having back. us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, thanks for putting up with the fact that we've had to do take two now, because we tried this once, and I forgot to hit the record button. <sighs> Leave it to Brandon. Leave it to oh, me. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. I was no, just going to roll with it. Let's call it what it is. I think Nick noticed that. it earlier oh. and probably just didn't want to say anything. He was trying to waste more of the day. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, if I don't hit the record, but we'll have to do this twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, then we'd miss lunch. True. We don't want to miss lunch. That's a bad no. idea. No. Yeah. Well, exactly. it was really good when we started the last time, so we could start it again. But uh, yeah, I... Uh, what do you guys think of the show so far? I mean, now that you've gone through it twice, so that's nice. This is a good run. <laughs> it is good, and I just thought of it again. I said it on the first one, but that guitar entry, <laughs> that introduction with the guitar, Brandon needs to play that with his American pants on. I don't know why we haven't already done that. I feel like just playing that music for 30 seconds on loop with me <laughs> playing a guitar wearing the American flag pants just screams American-made CNC machines. Absolutely. Made in the USA. Made in the USA. Slapped right. it on the website. Yep, there we go. That, that should be the entrance to the website. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you click on the website and then it's just that music nobody's playing. Nobody's going to question Eagles if Eagles crying made. and then those pants. <laughs> I don't see why we haven't heard. Hey, can you write that down? We'll put that on the on the agenda. It's on noted. Noted? <laughs> it's noted. Okay, and it's recorded this time, so that's good too. But... Uh, yeah, as you guys all know, we try to keep it uh, keep it light around here. We like to have a little bit of fun, but also want to you know talk a little bit you know about CNC, about business. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about you know finance and money, and talk about you know the economy, kind of where we're sitting. And we thought, who better than the banks themselves to you know have some say in that? And uh, we'll kind of go through some of that with you today. But uh, you know, as as you guys always know, we got you know our current events. Then we're going to jump into some customer questions and comments before we jump into the audience question. And then we will talk a little bit about today's episode, which is smart money. And then uh, we'll jump into motivational quote of the week and some final thoughts. So anybody got anything before we get started? No, silence from everybody. It's like re- it. It's recording. Uh, it's recording. Hey, I hit the button this time. <laughs> I've looked down about six times in the last minute. <laughs> Here we go. Current events. So what was current? Fourth of July, right guys? It was. Yeah. America's weekend. America's weekend. American made, right? Yeah. That's right. So I, That's it's honestly my favorite week of the year. I don't know why, but I, I absolutely love the 4th of July week. Mm-hmm. My wow. favorite holiday is Thanksgiving, but my oh, favorite week is 4th of July. Is it because of the food at Thanksgiving? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge foodie. Like, yeah. I just love food. <laughs> How I'm not 600 pounds, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I have no idea because I literally love I know why food. you don't stop moving. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. because if, I literally walked here today. Yeah. I had to drop my truck off at the dealership and I just walked oh. because I knew that food would get the best of me <laughs> on the 4th of July and it did. So it was like, got to burn some calories off. So. Yep. But yeah, what'd you guys do for the 4th of July? Anything fun? I went uh, back to South Dakota where my parents live and, and uh, it rained the whole weekend. <laughs> it rained all weekend all here weekend. too. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it seems like the rain doesn't stop up here. It does not. Unfortunately, poor South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Iowa. you know, all of the central part of the United States has just been slammed this year. Yeah. No snow, but plenty of rain. Plenty of rain. Yep. That's how it goes. Do you get any fireworks in? No fireworks, even in South Dakota, which you can buy the bigger and better fireworks versus Minnesota. Um, <laughs> we get sparklers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are the uh, bottle rockets? Yeah, bottle yeah. rockets. Those are I get here. That's, that's almost illegal, though, because it leaves yeah, the ground. Yeah. It's, the ground. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a no fun state. Yeah, it's a no sometimes. fun state. Yep. Uh, but no, yeah, we watched some fireworks, but that's about it. We did, we did some uh, water skiing as well. Did you? Back and hamstrings are... You're feeling it? You know, I'm not getting any younger, any lighter, and it just, you feel it a little more after <laughs> they you... They had to give the boat a little <laughs> yeah. bit more horsepower to get you out of the water? Yeah. We had to throw somebody out of the boat just to give you out. <laughs> Outside <laughs> that, was two great. people. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. I, uh, yeah, I'm really good at getting drugged by a boat. I can't water ski, so <laughs> I, I've tried a couple times, and it always results in me just getting pulled by a boat while I'm holding <laughs> yeah. onto a rope because I can't comprehend the part of letting go of the rope once I've fallen. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was all good though. Great weekend for me. That's awesome. What about you, Sam? Anything fun? Uh, no, and there's no water skiing 
behind our boat. I got a 18 foot Northwoods pontoon, okay. 28 Avenue on it. So there it's we more go. of a beer drinking machine. It's a beer, right beer, beer drinking machine. I like it. <laughs> Nickname is Woody, and that yeah. thing is it's reliable, but it is old. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd yeah. you go? Uh, just on the lakes in Alexandria. Oh, up in Alexander? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's where we're out of. And uh, yeah, I had some family in from out in Vegas. They come up here for the 4th, and we usually try to go down there for either Memorial or Labor Day. So Sweet. Probably they're all about the same age, and we get along pretty good. Probably so a little far. colder up here versus Vegas right now. Yeah, it was 120 degrees. When oh, my God. On Sunday. The real question is, are you sober yet from the weekend? Finally. Okay, that's good. <laughs> he, he napped on the way here. <laughs> no, I'm not as young as I was either, so uh, I can't water ski, and now I can't do what I used to do in college. Yeah, years, so. you find that out the hard way, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Nick, you went golfing. I did. Pretty fun. It was great, yeah. Took Chad out to uh, my old work environment out in Victoria. We played a deer run. Chad broke 80, or broke 90. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah, so he's pretty pumped about that. That's pretty awesome. It was What'd great. What'd you yeah. shoot? Seventy-five. Oh, just a subtle. If I, if I could, if I could putt, I'd be really good. <laughs> I can't. You want to be here? Life. You'd be on the tour for sure. I always say that if I could hit fairways, greens, and putt. Well, David tried telling us the other day you hit it like three hundred and sixty yards straight every time. He's a liar. <laughs> He's, he's a fa- he fabricates things. He's sometimes. not lying. He's being humble right no, now. No, no, no. I went top golfing with him down in Vegas, and the dude's. Just strikes it straight as heck for 300 yards. I swear to God. It's yeah, that's me swinging as hard as I can. And the 360s, if the wind's at my back, there's a good roll. And you hit it down the highway. And right. it hit it. Yeah, yeah. Cart path. Hits the right. cement a couple times, and it's then but it can get the 360. I did tell Chad 360 equals probably 320. Yeah. Just like the guys that say they hit it 300, hit it 270. Chad, All I know is you hit the back net at. Yeah. At Top Golf, almost every time you tried, and it was straight down the middle. Yeah, that's pretty know. good on the fly at Top Golf, dude. It was, and we weren't on the top level either, for the record. Like, want to make it clear because at the top level is a little easier. We were like second level, and he was drilling it off the back wall. I got some of the baseball swing. He's still young and limber. It, <laughs> it was ridiculous. I was watching yeah. him, and I'm like, yeah, this dude can golf. Yeah. You give me a club today, though, with the back and hamstrings. <laughs> Might go 100 yards. <laughs> <laughs> and he might end up in the ER. But that's as long, as, long as it's straight, man. Yeah, well, that's not always straight. <laughs> so. Well, I got to drive to Brainerd for the second time without racing. Did it rain? It, it did. <laughs> did you get Perkins? Uh, I did not get Perkins this time. Dang it. We, uh, it was my son's uh, 10th birthday, and he picked that he wanted to go to Brainerd. He had this whole plan. We were going to get cupcakes, and you know he wanted to pass out cupcakes at the racetrack. So that was his decision. Me and my wife woke up, looked at the radar, and we're like, it's a beautiful day today, but I don't think it's going to be beautiful up there. I think it's going to rain. Is your and, yard still flooded? Oh, yeah. My yard's just destroyed. <laughs> Did you get it's the like lawnmower a, unstuck? Yeah, got the lawnmower unstuck. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> we got to ask that every week. Every week. Sure. But so anyways, we drove up there because I'm like, I'm not going to wreck his birthday. We're going to go up there. We got up there, passed out cupcakes. It was a really nice day, and then a storm rolled through, and I was on the track this time getting ready to race. Didn't even get to turn a lap. Got on the track, started raining. So that's twice now I've driven to Brainerd and gotten zero racing in. So, But we got to stop at my buddy's place on the way back, and we had uh, he had a party going. So we the boys got to go swimming at night, which is for them is every like, kid's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every kid's So dream. your buddy cooked you pancakes. Yeah, my buddy uh, did not cook me pancakes. It was uh, <laughs> hamburgers and hot dogs. American uh, 4th of July. I got a question. Yeah. Do you guys ever put peanut butter on your pancakes? Yeah. I do not. What? I put it on my waffles. Peanut butter. I, I, yes, yeah, I do it on my waffles too. I'm yeah. like, well, there's no difference. It's just yep. a little different shape. Oh, so good. I've never done it on I've never pancake. gotten back. It never gone like, back. You need, you need to try it. Here's one for you. Have Don't you ever it. tried honey on your pizza? No. No, but I heard a girl from Nebraska that works at her office, she does applesauce on her pizza. What? What? And you heard that right. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds she, like something my nine-year-old does. She said it. She said it as casually and normal, like it was something to be well recept- received. I'm like, that might be the yeah. craziest thing. Yeah, hot honey, hot honey on pepperoni pizza. Try it. All right. You try the peanut butter. I'll try the honey. I'll try it. All right. I will not try either. <laughs> for the record, we always do the peanut butter. Never. Yeah, it's crazy. Well. I think uh, I think we've covered all the current events, other than it's still raining and it continues to rain and it'll probably rain forever and never no, stop. No, tomorrow's raining. gonna be last day of rain and it's gonna be like hot, like okay. Vegas hot for a few days. Whatever you say, Belinda Peters. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. I'll believe you when it happens. But my yard needs. You'll, to dry you'll get out. to race this weekend, I promise you. 
No, it's going to be hot. I don't want to go right. racing if it's hot. Yeah, then you're sweating. Well, yeah. So he whines if it rains. And he no, actually, my kid out. has a baseball tournament this weekend. Oh, boy. Fair yeah, I forgot about baseball. Yeah. He's going to be out of second base dancing. and Probably. Yeah, did you see the last time? <laughs> with the, oh, we used to do that. Where he tucked the shirt yeah, in up top. Yeah, he tucked the shirt in up top, and he's Hilarious. dancing at second base. I'm like, oh, my God. So he's not just a goalie dancer. He's a baseball yeah, dancer. Yeah, exactly. He's he'll just dance re- with He'll dance at everything. He doesn't care. But let's jump right into it. Let's jump into some customer questions. How's that sound? Customer questions and comments so from episode 82 which was on finance believe it or not oh well that was the last time we talked about finance was episode 82 um somebody made a comment which i wanted to address because they said it's kind of addressed at you guys said it said if life happens to you and your credit tanks nobody will finance anything for you underwriting is where these promises go to die (laughs) (laughs) and you know i wanted to just vouch for you guys because i don't believe that to be true I believe that, I mean, there's always stipulations. Okay, let me start there. Like, yeah, if your credit's so terrible, nobody's going to finance you, right? But at the same time, like a lot of times, a a lot of times the banks are willing, I guess, I shouldn't say every bank. I can't speak for every bank, for you guys. I can speak for a a business side of banking, right? Equipment financing. Mm -hmm. You guys look past some of that other stuff if the story is there, if the business plan is there if, if the proof of concept is there right i mean to you guys it's more than just like what's the credit look like on paper but it's like i have seen it with my own eyes mm-hmm. some people whose credit when i saw the you know the application come through i'm like oh yeah i'm excited and you guys are like you know we'll see what happens and the guys the guy straight up tells me like my credit's not very good and then he goes like not very good like really low and then he tells me the score and i'm like oh yeah he ain't getting financed no <laughs> chance and then you guys come back and you're like yeah no we got him approved yep. and i'm like wait what like how? Well, I think you, there's two words that you said to start, and it's life happens. Right. And, you know, just to kind of give you a background, too, there's – people are – there's a, maybe a misconception that everybody's a bank in the world, right? Everybody's U.S. Bank, everybody's Wells Fargo, which is not the case. Right. Um, your local bank, there's a credit union, and then there's independent equipment financers like us, Geneva Capital. Right. Um, and it's all risk-based, and it's all – everybody looks at it a little differently. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, right now in the economy too, you know, banks might not be lending out like they used to because of rates changing drastically. You know, their back-end portfolio, just because people took on a ton of debt at the, you know, 3%. Correct. You know, they're not lending out because they're trying to clean up their portfolio. You know, we've heard that with banks uh, currently. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the nice part is with us, you know, we don't look at just the credit. We don't, right. if it c- comes into our system, it's not like if your credit score is from 500 to 550, you know, it's an automatic decline. Or if it's, you know, 600 to 700, you're in this box. Yeah. It's subjective. We look at a lot of different things yep. and we like to call the customer. And like you said, get a mm-hmm. business plan if the credit is not great yep. and learn about it because life happens. Yep. You know, we've heard many stories of, you know, hey, my wife had cancer, right? And I had to take out all this credit card debt. To Correct. Well, well, you know, it's not something that you can fight, right? And yeah. we get that, you know, you had a successful business before, we're going to lend you, you know, money for the machine. And, you know, the other thing too is the machine itself. We are collateralized by that machine and that machine only. And uh, it's not like we're taking your business assets to cover our, you know, butts on the back end. Right. It's just that machine. And we trust these machines, specifically ShopSaber, uh, you know, the they hold its value for a long, long time. So it's yep. not, you know, when I say we're in the business of risk, um, you know, it's not a risky, you know, venture in some cases. It's just yeah. lending on these machines because we know that if it were to go bad, you know, we're not going to throw you under the you know, under the curb and say, you know, you yeah. owe us all this money. We're right. going to pick up the machine and work with you, you know, in the worst right. case scenario, which is very, very rare. Yeah. And uh, help sell the machine and apply those proceeds towards your balance with us. Yep. And in most cases, just because of the value of it, it wipes you clean. You know, everybody goes their separate ways and it's all good and dandy. Do you agree with that, Sam? 100%. Okay. The big thing is, um, and Connor touched on it too, is, you know, we we look at each deal different. We try to paint the picture. We yeah. don't let one credit or one glimpse in the radar here, you know, five years ago, define the, who you yeah. are, define the picture. So we really, you know, dig into all aspects of it and you know picking up the phone is a big thing yeah um our whole company will do and you know i think that's what stands out to me the most is that you guys are like real people like 
And then for the record, the reason I called Sam out is because Sam said he wasn't going to talk on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. He needs um, to talk. Yeah, 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 I got him. So, uh, you know, but the reality is that I just wanted to talk about that question because like the comment of underwriting is where the promises go to die. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it's incorrect in some banking situations, right? But I think your guys' underwriting is like, the opposite. It's not like your underwriting is not where things go to die. It's where let's dig into it and find out the real story here. Yeah. So we can like, is there a way for us to say yes? Like, I, yeah. I feel like you guys are, and that's what makes this partnership so well is that we, we build super awesome machines. I will, I'm not, I'm going to tote our own, you know, toot our own horn here. And like, it's awesome. Like I, I, I will, will stand behind the product we build and the people that back it here at shop saber that we're, we're doing things right when it comes to CNC equipment. And I feel confident about that, but we're also partnering with lenders that are doing it right. And what I mean by that is you guys will dig in to find a way to say yes and make it happen because you see that the equipment is gonna do what we say it's gonna do. So now as long as the business owner is gonna do what they say they're gonna do and has a history of it or can prove that they're they're gonna plan, yeah. It, it's a it's a win win situation. Yeah, and I think too, you know, if, if you know your credit is bad, just right. coming into it, you know, expectations wise, right. you can't assume that you're gonna get you know, the longest term possible for right. financing, right? You, right? you know, that's not going to happen. Yep. You know, I would say, you know, as you're looking into it and you're skeptical and you say, you know, there's no way I get approved, Yep. you know, underwritings or my dreams go to die, you know, <laughs> come into it with a plan that, you know, and, yep. and, and we've had a hundred different scenarios where it's, you know, Hey, do you, you know, I own this edge bander free and clear. Would you guys be willing to take that as collateral? Right. Sure. Yeah, that helps. You know, right. in some cases too, if you don't have the cash up front, you know, that is, you know, sometimes required, whether that's 20% down, you mm-hmm. know, to get it on a short term, you know, if credit is, you know, a little damaged from things past, you know, there's different ways around it. Right. And I think too, to your point, we're not trying to find a reason to say no. We're trying to find a reason to say yes. You don't make n- money by saying no. Like, no. like, let's be honest. Like, that's how you guys make money is no. by saying yes. Absolutely. So the thing that I point out the most here, and I'm going to, you know, we'll, this question... I think has been answered pretty well. But at this point, to finish this this question up is, I want to point out the fact that like, if you come into any situation in life at all, not just business, but any situation in life without the willingness to put in the work, you're not going to get the results. And so that goes for your business. And so if you have bad credit, you have to put in more work to get the yes. And what I mean is you better come into it with a plan. You better come into it with an idea of, okay, how am I going to prove that I am worth the money that you're about to risk on me? And if you come in with the plan and you're willing to put the work in, you're going to find that you're going to start turning your, your stuff around. Yeah, right. Correct. And, and so it's just simple as that. People who play the victim all the time will always be the victim, yep. but people who are willing to say, you know what? I had a bad time, but this is how I'm going to recover from it. They're always going to land on their feet. They might have a bad time, but I'll tell you what, those people get always get back up. They stand up and they find a way to be successful. And I will say, you look at a lot of millionaires and billionaires in the world and everybody believes that it's like all of this luxurious life all the time, but they don't realize that a vast majority of people who eventually make it as a millionaire or a billionaire were bankrupt or dang near bankrupt at one point or not in their life. Mm-hmm. And it's because they never gave up because they risked everything they had. And yeah, sometimes your risk doesn't work. No. I mean, it just doesn't happen sometimes, but if you keep digging and you put together a plan and you never give up, like there's always that road forward. And and I think that's the message I'll take away from question one there. So I like it. Question two, kind of lighthearted. I, I was, it was a funny comment that we posted on the 4th of July video. <laughs> uh, I posted that 4th of July video. I don't know if you guys saw it on our social media yeah. and it was just a message telling everybody we appreciated them and whatnot. And uh, somebody's comment was Brandon. I'm pretty sure when we met you had hair. <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the club, brother. You are correct. I had hair when I started here, and then uh, all of my luscious locks disappeared. Uh, I blame my wife, my kids, and the stress of work. So that's where it all went. But and all the sales reps here. That yeah, I was gonna say specifically yeah. Travis. Yeah, specifically <laughs> Travis. I blame Travis. I blame Nick. I blame Chad. Whoa, 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 whoa! Your hair was way gone before I started here. Uh, it wasn't this bad though. It was. I know. It, it had hair here. Well, if it makes you feel brother, better, my brother. He, he's not going to listen to this. 20, he's 25. <laughs> yep. And he just shaved his head off completely bald. 25. Best decision I ever made. He, he, and if you can, the other thing too is if you can, this is getting off topic here, but if you can grow a good beard, bald is the way to go. Yeah, I can't grow a beard and I'm so bald. So, hey, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate I that. I looked over yeah, before I said that. Yeah, 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 I appreciate it. So, um, so, Connor, you're not taking the bald out anytime soon either, are you? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I honestly, the best decision I ever made, shave my head. Like, 
way easier to manage. Saves time. Way less self-conscious. I'll be honest, as you start losing your hair, you start to get self-conscious on it. Like, not at all. I, I got nothing to worry about. I'm bald. Like, exactly. <laughs> get over it. And honestly, it's a great discussion piece. Like, yeah. people ask more questions about my hair by not having hair. Do like, they really? oh, I get more questions. Like, it comes up a lot more than you really. Like, comments like this. Yeah. Like, we... You had hair before. Well, yeah, I had hair at one point in my life, you know, like, but it's crazy. Like, and yeah. now people, when they see pictures of me that have met me after, I've been, like, when bald, I had hair. Bald look oh, way better. Oh, my God, you had hair? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah, I had hair. Like, yep, yeah. was bored with some. Like, <laughs> happened. But all that money you're saving on shampoo, you yeah. can spend yeah. on gas. Yeah, but it's really confusing. Reason. I'm not sure where to stop <laughs> with the face wash. At Perkins. <laughs> yeah. Like, where do you stop with the face wash, though? That's the hardest thing to figure out when you shave is, like, how high up? <laughs> when you feel a little fuzzy, that you keep going all the way back. Like, I don't know. Why not? But uh, yeah, so the answer is yes. I had hair at one point, uh, but I've lost it. Um, then question three from our hold down video: uh, What if you just make a small pocket for small parts? Uh, and they're talking about something like a three inch by five inch part, like on a twenty three or a single zone vacuum, rather than like flattening a slab. But would that same concept work? And I'd say, yes, I mean, that's an awesome question. I'm glad you asked it because it's a great way to utilize vacuum on smaller parts. The, the, the technology of vacuum is simply avoiding leakage, right? You want the air to naturally go to the material so it can't leak around the material. And so, yes, if you cut out of a, you know, of a sealed material, you cut out a pocket that fits the piece of material you're working on, a three inch by five inch or even a two inch by two inch part, the air can't go anywhere but to your material. So it's gonna hold it down. So it's a great way to use vacuum. Um, it's called vacuum fixturing. There, there's a lot of ways to do that. But yes, uh, you, to answer that question, you can absolutely use the same method we used on the hold down video on smaller parts and different applications. It doesn't have to be just for flattening slabs. So love that one. Uh, thanks for, for throwing that question out there in the comment. Uh, obviously, keep the comments and questions coming because we will continue to answer them week after week. And uh, now it's our turn to ask you a question. So. This week, we're gonna jump right into it, but the audience question of the week. So for the audience question this week, what do you what do you look back on and say that was one of the best decisions I made for improving either your job or your business? That is this week's question. I wanna hear your answers. What do you look back on and say was one of the best decisions you made for improving your job or business? Nick? I have a perfect answer for this one. All right, I'm ready, go. Telling people no. Telling people Especially no. like for my photography business. I know yep. we've discussed this yep. before. We did. Like if you can tell and know that somebody's going to be a pain in the neck, for lack of a better term, Yep. just say no. He wants to say a pain in the butt. Yeah. But just, I mean, don't be afraid to tell people no. Like it's, your time is more well spent right. doing what you're doing with people that appreciate it and not somebody mm -hmm. that's either trying to take advantage of it or telling you how to do that work. Yeah. Just a lot of business owners struggle with saying no to people. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Like when you look back at either your career, your businesses, you know, whatever, but mm -hmm. what do you think is like the best decision you ever made if you were to like point out one thing? Uh, probably the biggest thing now is kind of what our discussion, the first question we had today is painting the picture, get to know the person, um, not just be a bank that gives numbers out, yeah. you know, um, really get to know them and uh, being more personal and um, more conscious of building relationships. The older I get, the more relationships mean um, yep. in business and in life. So isn't that crazy as you get older, like you realize like there's more than just me in the world. Like, yeah. you know, when you're young, you're just young and dumb and like, you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah, they'll figure it out. But yeah. then you get to the point where you're like, yeah, I should yeah. probably care a little bit more. Uh -huh. No, that's crazy. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I had seen a, just on that note, I had seen a, like an interview, they're walking on this beach, this retirement beach. And they had, this guy had asked all these old people, uh -huh. um, you know, if you had to give a piece of advice for your younger self or younger younger generation now, what would it be? And it was always the, you know, relationships, memories, Trump, you know, the money and material things in life. Right. Um, which I think to Sam's point is is key. And we try and do business the right way. Right way. You know, we're in the people people business. Yeah. So, um, but I would say just kind of Nick's Nick's note there. Um. The no has been big for me, and then um, delegation and trust. You know, building yep. your team around you. That, yep. um, you know, just think about how exhausting it is just to micromanage and think that you know you probably don't trust someone. Um, for you know, you hired them, you don't trust them. You're basically doing their job again. And right. It's like, well, you know, hire the right people. That trumps everything, and then from there, you know, as long as you're teaching them right. 
you know, you can delegate tasks and focus on things uh, a little more important for, you know, your business or, you know, your job, I think. Yeah, you, that's the one I was going to go with, to be honest. I'm glad you brought that up because that's that for me is the biggest thing that I would say has improved my job as well as our family business is that the ability to delegate more, but investing in people. And that's what I've always said is that like, as a family run business, you always start out small. I mean, everybody has to start off with one person, right? I mean, you're, you're kicking this business off and you get so accustomed to just doing it all yourself that you stunt the growth of your own business because you're not willing to invest in your business. And so for me, that's the biggest thing is like investing in the business, whether that be in resources, whether you're you know hiring more people to do the job because you can't sell more you know equipment without more people. I can't make every phone call. You know, I used to make every phone call. And so it's like, you know, definitely harder to do now. Uh, but then being able to invest in like good people around you that are smarter than you. You know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, but actually learn from other people and, and learn from the education that they bring to the table because there's a lot of people that have spent a lot of time learning and educating themselves and for me, I want to learn from that, you know, and learning that I think has been the biggest investment in the business is just that it's okay to not be the only person that does it. And it's okay to like invest in equipment, invest in, you know, product build, building, you know, this example, you know, we always tried to get by, you know, we always tried to get by with the smallest building possible. And we finally were like, let's just buy the building we need. And it has made such a big difference in how we've run our business. And so that would be my biggest thing. So, you know, obviously for the for the audience, we'd love to hear your answers. Put them in the comment section. Send us an email if you want. You can send it to marketing at shopsaver.com. But we'd love to hear, what do you look back on and say was one of the best decisions that you made for improving your job or business? So we'll follow up. Uh, obviously, we'll review some of the questions or some of the comments and uh, talk about those in a future episode. But let's jump into it. Now that we're 20 minutes in, let's get into the the heart and soul of this episode. And that is smart money. Um, I want to discuss with you guys, you know, about financing. Let's talk a little bit about some key pieces here. And I think the first one I want to jump into is let's talk about something we talked about last week, Nick, but buying equipment versus buying toys. You see this a lot in business. And I think right now is a time to talk about it because as the economy is, you know, tightening up a little bit, I wouldn't say it's bad. Okay. First off, I want to like change the narrative. I think a lot of people are painting the economy out to be a lot worse than it is. And it's not as bad as people are painting out to be. I think people are conscious of what's going on out there. So they're being a little bit more thoughtful with their spending, but it's a very different thing right now than to go out and buy a boat versus going out and buying a CNC machine or buying a piece of equipment for your shop. Mm -hmm. I think one is considered a little bit more frivolous, right? And it would be probably more risky right now. You don't maybe need to spend the money on a brand new boat right now, but buying equipment for your business to grow your business to me seems like a no brainer. I mean, obviously I'm in the business to sell equipment, but it also, that equipment is gonna have a return on that investment and it's gonna help you buy things like mm -hmm. that boat mm -hmm. where a boat isn't gonna ever return its investment. I, I, I can't see any situation where you're going to buy the boat makes your business better, you know? Yeah. So I guess from your guys' standpoint, let's jump into that like smart money moves right now, buying equipment versus buying toys. Like what are you guys seeing out there? I think the, the key thing and you touched on it too is people are, maybe more cognizant um, is probably the right word. Just because back in the, you know, think about when we were at like three and a half percent, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, well, it's three and a half percent. That's the best rate we've ever seen. We're just going to finance everything. Everything's going so good in the economy. Yep. And honestly, it wasn't as good as people probably thought it to be. It was a good, good economy, still is a really good economy. Um, and I think too, it's, okay, I could spend money and feel like I can get away with it back then, but now you got to really just focus on long-term what makes the most sense. Um, and I think the long -term Sorry, I set my alarm off there. It's time to wake up. <laughs> Sam might have been sleeping over there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, to your point, a machine long-term is going to pay way more dividends. A, for you personally, the business, oh. um, it just... I always talk about the ripple effect. You know, if you drop a rock in a lake, you know, what is it going to do? It's going to send the ripples. And it's like, if you buy this machine, what is it going to do to your business? Right. What's the, and then that ripples into your personal life. Right. It's just, it honestly feels like a no brainer. Obviously everybody likes a nice boat because you've yeah. never seen anybody sat yeah. on a boat. But yeah. <laughs> until it's broken down. Yeah. Until it's broken down. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out David. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you you David yeah. so basically do it in the right order so yeah. get your equipment that's going to make you the money first and then well, have the money to afford that new truck while still having money left to well, that's, continue running well we, yeah. we hear it way too many times it's like what's the quickest way to run out of business 
run out of money. Right. And and we're not saying, you know, finance specifically, but it's because people spend money and delegate their liquid funds to things banks. that don't make them money. They don't yeah. make them yeah. money. Mm-hmm. Where rather than investing in the business with a CNC router or yep. plasma table or whatever it may be, you know, that's going right back into the business. Then that's pumping out money. Correct. It just, it seems. To Here's be the thing I always find funny about business owners that I know a lot of business owners. Okay. I know a lot of people that own businesses. I know a lot, I know a lot of people that are very good business owners. I also know a lot of people that are really terrible business owners, okay? <laughs> and my favorite is that when I learn, I learn more from the people who are terrible business owners mm-hmm. than I do from the good business owners, to be honest with you. Um, but my favorite is when people go out and they, they buy these toys and then they're like, well, yeah, if it just doesn't work out, I'll just sell it. And that's their mentality. And I'm like, yeah, but you just lost your investment because you buy that pickup truck, you drive it off the lot and it's immediately depreciated. Yep. Say bye. Right. Mm-hmm. There he goes yeah. there. Even if you paid cash for it, you've lost some of it. You basically given mm-hmm. cash away. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, for one, if, if, unless you have like everything else that you need, mm-hmm. then buy the truck, right? You don't need any equipment. You don't need, then buy the truck. But, or if the truck, if you're a construction worker and the truck is going to make you money, okay, buy the truck. But my point being is like, if your shop is still doing things manually or the hard way or an old, you know, you have failing equipment and you go out and buy the truck first, mm-hmm. Like you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Cause one, if your business does get tight, that truck's not going to be able to build as much liquid cash as it did when you spent it on it. Mm-hmm. Where Truck, a CNC machine. don't build cabinets. Right. <laughs> and where a CNC machine, A, you could source the work off it. So not only does the machine do the work you're purchasing it for, but also you can sublet time on it. So people will pay you to do their projects on it or pay you to do other things. So, I might be a cabinet maker, but I can also cut signs and I can do, uh, there's other things and other avenues. So even if my business goes under, right? Let's say cabinetry just doesn't work out for me. I can get into boat interiors. I can get into, you know, custom signs. I can get, there's so many other things you can do with it to keep it going. Where with a truck, it's a truck. Like it's only worth what a truck's worth and it's never going to make you more money. You're going to call people up and say, I got a truck. You want to pay me to pull, pull that trailer? Like maybe, <laughs> but that's a completely different, you know, scenario and you're yeah. still spending money, you know? Yeah. So it's like, that's the thing I think about there. So, you know, as we jump into it, like the other thing that I, I think about is interest rates, right? I think people are looking at the investment and in equipment right now wrong. There's a lot of people that I've talked to. They're like, oh, I'm waiting to see what the interest rates do. I'm going to be honest with you. Interest rates shouldn't be a thought right now. Like, Interest rates should be a thought on boats, mm-hmm. on cars, mm-hmm. on things that are not non, making you money. Exactly. Non-revenue yeah. producing. Right. Yeah. Like interest rate matters in all mm-hmm. those scenarios. Your house, mm-hmm. you're going to finance it for 30 years. Exactly. The interest rate matters. Mm-hmm. But you know what the interest rate really doesn't matter on? A CNC machine, yeah. a paint booth for your shop, a, a new welder. That stuff doesn't matter. You know why? Because if you have a need for the equipment, you can't afford to wait on the interest anyways. You're giving money away. And so the thing that I'm laughing at here, and, and I know this is going to sound bad, but I'm, I laugh at it when people are like, I'm waiting because the feds say they might drop the rate a quarter point. Yeah. Connor, what does a quarter point do to an interest on a CNC machine? You know, let's say, a, I don't even know. Just pick a number. Of Just to say $50,000. $50,000. There you go. Fine. $50,000 machine. If you drop it from a, let's just say it's at eight and a half where Prime is now. Yep. And you dropped it to 8.25 and you're like, okay, now I'm going to buy this machine. Yeah. You just saved probably over the life of let's just say on average on, on average four years. Okay. Ten, twenty bucks. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like a couple cups of coffee. Th- yeah. That's it. And it's, like people don't realize that. Like that's not a made up number. That's real. Like if the interest rate drops from eight and a half to eight and a quarter, which is considered a big drop for the record. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean Guys, correct me if I'm wrong mm-hmm. here, but interest rates don't normally drop more than a quarter point at a time. If a big, big one would be half a point. Okay. Yeah. On average, climbing, yeah. quarter point. Quarter point. And that's the one that they've been talking about. People are holding off on buying machines over $10. Mm-hmm. Like, not $10 a month. $10. Mm-hmm. Like, one $10 bill. Mm-hmm. That is it. Like, it blows me away. Like when you start thinking that number might be not it's, 100% it's, accurate. Say, okay. It's going to be maybe a little, maybe a little more. Maybe a little more than that. But my point being is, okay, it's, even 50 bucks. It's like, it's your employee. You know, yeah. I'm paying him 650 an hour versus 648 an hour right. over the four years. And that's my point is like, when you look at that, it's like. Stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. Thank you. Nice. That's where that, that phrase I have to say a lot is because you literally are doing that because mm-hmm. like companies like ShopSaver, we're offering incentives to help you purchase right now. 
And I've watched people, like I offered free shipping last month. Mm-hmm. And I watched people say, oh, I want to see what the interest rate does. The savings on the <laughs> shipping I gave you was $2,000. Yeah. The interest is gonna, you're going to save is going to be 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're going to wait on the interest before you, like what? If you have a need for a machine, and a lot of people are like, well, my business isn't growing right now. But are you still in business? Mm-hmm. Are you still cutting cabinets? Well, yeah. So why not do it more efficiently? Like the thought process behind it is, I'll wait till I'm growing to need the CNC machine. No, no, no. Why don't you grow because you bought the CNC machine? Mm-hmm. Utilize the revenue that you're already making to pay for the equipment. So when you do start growing, you're already in a position to do so. And, and that's to where the interest rate to me, like the quarter point drop mm-hmm. makes a difference on your house. It's over 30 years. 30 that's a years. big difference. Yep. Way bigger dollar amount too. Right. The, so. the app, that, that's exactly the average, you know, home that you're going to, you know, you're talking about is hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Versus a CNC machine, a, an expensive investment here. We're talking a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, right? So it's like, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. You can't compare interest mm-hmm. on a home or a car or boat versus the interest on a CNC machine. Yeah. And, and I think too, the key point here, you know, people look at it. I look at my personal expenses monthly. Right. Um, you know, and if you're hiring a CNC router versus an employee, right. you guys have probably talked about this a hundred times, yep. I believe it. Um, but, you know, then when you look at it, well, what am I paying this guy biweekly? What am I paying him per hour? Right. And it's the, the classic uh, debate of, do I hire another guy to cut it or do I hire a CNC router? We're just off the bat, you know, monthly payment wise for a CNC router, you know, if you boil that down into just a hourly wage, you're talking six fifty an hour. Yeah, it's under minimum wage. Well, right now. well yeah. under. Yeah. And then you, yeah, it's mm-hmm. just the machine is under minimum wage. You can't hire somebody for that. Mm-hmm. And the big thing that I point out is, go hire the guy. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Yep. You show me a business owner right now that says he can hire somebody right now mm-hmm. because I haven't found one. Every business owner I talk to says they can't find good help right now. Help doesn't show up. The people that do show up are underqualified. So you can go do that. Or there's a CNC machine here that the guys you already trust and the gals you already trust and hired. And the, as we talked about earlier, you know, mm-hmm. things that we've done to change our lives the most has been trusting other people. Mm-hmm. So trust the guys that you've already hired to do their job. And that is now running the CNC machine. Help take the burden off of them because otherwise your good employees are going to leave. Yeah. They're just going to leave because eventually they're going to go, you know what? He's stepping over, you know, dollars to save pennies. Like, yeah. I don't want to be a part of that. No. Do you... Do you think it's as simple as people just don't know? Like yes. going, going back to what we talked about earlier with like the credit score and I do. still getting approved and then this quarter percent thing, like do people just assume that it's the yeah. same across the board for everything and they don't understand? Yeah, all of this? I think, you know, a good a good thing Brandon brought up was the mortgage, right? That's exactly Completely right. different, right? Yeah. And and it's, it's you know, 30 years for $200,000 and that's just a different yeah. ballpark, different right. world. So they think a quarter point, you know, to them, just from their personal lives is a big deal. Correct. Which, again, if you're doing it on a router over five years, yep. not a big deal. And, and that's the biggest thing is they, nobody teaches this stuff. No. Right? You don't learn this There's anymore, not a right? class for this. There's not a class for this. So people learn it the hard way. And unfortunately, they just assume that, well, I've bought a house in, my pa- in the past, you know, and I've bought a car and this is how it affected my payments. They don't realize that you can't look at it because, again, the CNC machine is generating revenue. And even when we talk about machines for a second here, four years, five years, the average person is paying it off in, I mean- A couple of years. Yeah, mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the machines have, here's the thing about CNC machine. This is my favorite story about it all. The machine generates enough revenue to pay it off in 30 to 90 days in most cases. And then they realize the business owners have told me, yeah, I could have paid it off in 90 days, but why would I at this point? The machine's rolling its own debt. It's paying for itself. So I'm not gonna use my liquid cash to pay off something that is paying for itself anyways. And when I add up how much interest I'm gonna spend over the two years or the three years, Six, it, it's- 650 an hour for two years right. versus hiring a guy that- Correct. 20 yep. bucks an hour for- So that's years. how they look at it. It's like, I'm not gonna use my liquid cash because then if something goes wrong, I can pay off the truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can pay off the boat. I can pay off my personal stuff because I have the cash because the CNC machine is creating it. Yeah. And that's where people, I think, get lost in this whole thing is that these machines literally will pay themselves off in 90 days in many cases. I mean, mm-hmm. I want you to think about this as a business owner. If you're sitting there right now, I want you to think about the last job that you did. 
you know, each person sitting here listening right now, like what was the last job you did? How big was it? You know, I want you to think about the sign job, the cabinet job, whatever it was. You know, I'm going to use an example. I know the last cabinet job that I personally talked to a business owner on, he said the, the job itself was $35,000. Just that, that one cabinet job. He did it in a week. The CNC machine start to finish. He had everything done, installed in the house in a week. So if you can do three of those a month, right? That's not working four weeks now of the year. That's the three weeks of the month. You're going to pay for a sixty to $70,000 router in one month. Well, out of curiosity, if he were not to have the router, how long would it take him to do that same $35,000 job? You know, I don't know on his case there, but I would, I mean. Obviously it differs a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it differs for every person, but I, I would be willing to say that a base cabinet, you, you know, I can cut a base cabinet in under an hour with a machine. Without a, or excuse me, I can just under an hour without a machine, excuse me. It takes me under five minutes with a machine. So if it took him, a, and again, that's edge banding, that's finishing, yeah, staining, yep, yep, installing, yep. everything he said. So I would imagine that doing all of that without the machine, he's probably two, three weeks. Yep. So you're talking a third of the time to do the work he's already doing. He's going to do that job regardless. It's just now he can do more in less time. So now you can be three times more efficient and make three times more income? Well, that's kind of the goal here, Seems right? logical. Yeah. Right? And I then mean, in some people's cases too, then they got, if they do it in a week, they got two weeks to go out on their new right. boat. Nice. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then, you know, let's talk about section 179 here. We got year end approaching, right? Yep. And it, let's talk about it. You got to be smart with it because again, people again, run out and buy that new truck mm -hmm. because it, it qualifies for section 179 in some regards, but that truck depreciates loses its value, doesn't make any more money, and you used your tax incentive on it, right? Yeah, and that's what, I, I've never understood it, but we do have plenty of businesses that understand that these equipment can be um, taken via Section 179 for write-off, but I right. hear it all the time. It's like, well, we got to buy some new trucks. I never understood that right. why people only think it's like trucks or vehicles or whatever. I think it's because it's sexy. I'm going to be honest with you. Like everybody thinks it's cool to drive around in that brand new Duramax, right? I'm going to go buy the brand new truck because that's what your friends see. Your friends don't see the CNC machine sitting in the shop running on Friday at 7 p.m. because your friends are at the bar hanging out. Exactly. They don't see that. So in people's minds, it's sexy to show up to the restaurant or the family function in the brand new Duramax every single year. And it's sometimes, I, I think that that is the difference in what you and I were talking about earlier, Sam, is you mentioned as you get older, building the relationships because mm -hmm. and you, as you get older, you realize the memories are more important. Things like, and to me, that's that, that m mindset, you know, is that as you get older, I think people start to realize like, especially as you mature in your business, mm -hmm. I don't need to impress anybody. Yeah. Like I used to be the guy that bought a new truck every year. Mm -hmm. I was that guy because I thought it was cool and I needed to have the new truck. Dude, I drive the same truck I've been driving. It's got... <laughs> 160,000 miles on it. And my wife even said this weekend, let's go look at new trucks. She's like, your truck's getting up there. I'm like, no, I love my truck. Why would I go get a new truck? <laughs> Things just get broken. I, I asked her, I was like, what's wrong with my truck? And she's like, nothing. I just figured you want, I'm like, no, I don't need a new truck. This truck's good. I'm like, she's, just getting it broke in. She's got something she wants to buy. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, I thought the same thing. Look You're, into that a little bit. Yeah, more. I'm going to dig into that. She I, wants I, a motorhome. I froze her credit card after that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, but it was like, you know, but you honestly think about it. And I'm like, I have mm -hmm. no desire to go buy a new truck now because I don't care. My truck works. Mm -hmm. I would rather invest in the business and things behind the scenes that, yeah, people might not see it, but that's the thing that sends my kids to Disney. Mm -hmm. That's the things that builds the dream and helps my wife, as we joke around about my wife, you know, what does she want? But I want her to be able to buy what she wants mm -hmm. because I'd rather the equipment pay for itself. And I'd rather the equipment build the life that we want. And I don't want to step over, you know, dollars to pick up, to pick up pennies. Yeah. Like I don't need to. So for me, section 179 is, is something that we need to talk about. And I guess Connor, Sam, either one of you want to kind of, for people who are listening, yeah. just briefly explain maybe quick what section 179 is. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we need to talk about the caps or anything like that. The IRS has caps on, you know. Yeah. It's millions we, of dollars. Yeah, yeah. We're not, yeah. Uh, if we're having that issue, then yeah. we can talk separately. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, First and foremost, we always say to, you know, we're not your accountant, so we don't tell you what meets your books, you know, what, mm -hmm. what you guys should do. But, you know, from a layman's terms, Section 179 is a write-off for the business where if you purchase, you know, in this specific scenario, equipment, or you can purchase a truck, um, you know, that machine price, so say $50,000, you can write that all off year one. You take that machine in, mm -hmm. install it, use it. So if you bought a machine and 
September, it's installed, you're using that, you take that $50,000, multiply it by your tax bracket, you know, whatever you can, um, whatever you're in, uh -huh. and that's a write-off for the business. So, you know, people, I think, which is shocking, uh, people still are hesitant on it um, just because they think there's some trick being played, but it's truly not. And I think yeah. more, more specifically, you know, it's it's money back in your pocket that then you can go out and buy that truck because you saved all that money with the write-off. Here's the thing for you. You have two choices right now. You're either going to write that check to the IRS yep. or you're going to write that check to yourself. Yeah, yep, exactly. It's it's mm -hmm. that simple. And that yeah. you're right. People get hesitant because they think they're playing a game, mm -hmm. but this is the things that successful business owners do every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what makes businesses successful is they take that money that they're going to have to pay regardless because they were a successful business. Mm -hmm. And rather than just giving it back to the government, they are giving it back to their business mm -hmm. and investing it in something that makes them money for the next year. There's a lot of conversations throughout November and December where you pick up the phone and this guy's like, well, I can't give it to uncle. I don't want to give it to uncle Sam. So it looks like yep. I'm buying a machine. To, You're like, you, know, you can give it to nephew Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I build the relationships. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. No, you just tell a lot of savvy business owners that time of year, they're picking up the phone. They're yep. like, I need to spend money and what's going to help my business the best. It's funny when people call us up here at Shops, they were, mm -hmm. they'll call up and they'll be like, I have to spend 42,900. <laughs> like they know the number. And I'm like, well, well, I can't promise you that number, yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. I got this for you, you yeah, know, like, yeah. but it's funny because some guys, yeah, they're so savvy with it. Mm -hmm. They know the exact number they need to spend before the year's out. Well, and that's the key too. It's, it seems to be, especially at the year end, mm -hmm. it's always those long time, some very mm -hmm. smart, successful yep. businesses that are utilizing yeah. that. Um, and one point too, I want to make is you can't, you know, take the write off to show, you know, a loss for the business. Right. You know, that's. Yes. Abusing it. Yes. Yeah. They won't allow it. <laughs> yep. You'll get, you will get audited by the yep. IRS, but um, you know, it's, it truly is. And I think what's key here to, you know, think about what America's going through. It's, you know, it's the reshoring of American, um, you know, fabrication and bringing, bringing everything back to America. You know, they want you to utilize these tax write-offs so you have more money to keep businesses going. Correct. Keep growing. You know, it's not... It's an game. investment in American manufacturing Correct. is what it is. It's Correct. not just like a loophole that they came up with like, hey, let's... No. They, they want you to put more money into your business. Yeah. That's their goal because then more businesses in the United States, more jobs in the United States, yep. therefore more taxes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Right? Exactly. They they gain on the win, mm -hmm. you know, long term. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for, for them, it, that's the investment here is yeah. that they're investing in you to invest in yourself. Yeah. And so... Again, it's, it's an opportunity. And yeah, you know, maybe sometimes you use it on a truck, okay? Like yeah, there are people that do sure. that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is if you're trying to grow your business, you're trying to be more successful, buy the truck in July when the machines made money and the business has made money. Don't buy it in December because it's a write-off. You know, no. buy the truck because you want it and you can afford it. Buy the equipment because it's going to grow your business for the next year. And, and that's how I've always looked at that. So you got to, you know, speak about the future a little bit. You got to think about the future. And, and really, I mean, Guys, did I miss anything here on the financing thing that you want to talk about? I think the only other thing I would note is that's not the only way to utilize Section 179. You yeah. know, there's lease to own options as well that yep. a lot of people will use because they can't take that big write off, mm -hmm. you know, this year, or they like to just spread it out. It works with their depreciation schedule, right? You know, rather than writing that, uh, you know, Section 179 off just in year one. You know, a lease to own option, um, a lease option will get you, you know, the full five years where you can essentially write off each monthly payment as a simple expense. So, you know, if you think of a monthly payment when yep. it, versus the finance option, the finance option, you're just writing off the principal of it, right? The equipment cost. The lease is the monthly payment, which in a monthly payment, you're writing off the equipment cost and the interest of it. So you're essentially writing off the employee. You're right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you're writing off a little more and yeah. writing off the employee. Yeah. Um, so You've hired somebody that you get to write off. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so if you talk to your accountant and they're like, no, you can't take the write-off this year. Well, you can still take a write-off. You can still buy that machine with a write-off this year, but then you can stretch out the But then you're taking the it next year too. Yeah, exactly. That's so. yeah, smart. So again- these guys know this stuff. Like they're a lot smarter than Nick and I. Nick and I don't know. Oh, this stuff. Wow. <laughs> we don't know this stuff. Guys. On this topic, maybe, yeah, but you guys not are good with else. it. So if if you honestly want more information on this, you need to call Sam. You need to call Connor. Give them the opportunity to talk about your business with you. I mean, they're not going to give you tax advice on your business, but they're going to tell you what might be available, and then it gives you the ammunition to then go to your CPA or your tax guy and say, hey. Connor and Sam were telling me about this. How does this apply to my business? Mm -hmm. And let your CPA answer that question. But 
you got friends in the business here. I mean, these guys will help you. And obviously you got CNC friends here too. I mean, we're willing to show you equipment that will we'll get you what you need and mm -hmm. take you to that next level. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's all I got on this topic, unless you guys got anything else. But like I said, being smart with your money is a big part of growth. Yep. yep. So yeah, with that, and you know, we're going to jump right into it, but you know, I know this episode's got a little long, but I still want to finish, you know, every episode, I like to finish it with a motivational quote for the week. And yeah, uh, we're going to jump into that. This week's motivational quote. So this week for motivational quote, we're going to talk about, uh, or we're going to come up with the, the one that I, I put together was don't follow your dreams, chase them. So what we're going to do by that is we're, we're going to, what I mean by that is go get the, go make your dreams happen, right? Part of this is investing in your business, whether it be section 179, whether it be, you know, financing, whatever you're going to do, find a way to chase that dream. Don't just follow the direction that you're going. Hey, you know what? I'm going to end up where I end up. No, let's, let's create that path, right? Let's go do something. So don't follow your dreams, chase them. Um, be very aggressive with it. Like I said, you got to go after the business and, and there's a lot of business out there right now. I'll tell you, like, again, I'm going to, I'm going to say the same thing I said earlier in this episode. The economy is not as bad as people are trying to paint it out. There's a lot of people that are paid a lot of money to tell you the economy is bad. <laughs> um, they want you to believe that. And I'm going to tell you right now, I get the phone calls from business owners every day all over the United States. And there's a lot of people buying equipment right now. There's a lot of money being invested in businesses. Mm -hmm. And the people that have the equipment and have the plan are going to be in a position in the next six to nine months that I think yeah. to take advantage of the people who waited too long. I think, uh, you know, we read manufacturing orders year over year, mm -hmm. you know, comparatively. Yep. Um, and it's up this year yep. in the manufacturing world because it's such a strong space yep. that's still growing. You know, the American reshore, you know, we want to do these jobs in America and not, yep. you know, ship them out uh, overseas. But um, you brought up a good point too, not to beat a dead horse, but, you know, we as finance people hear it a thousand times. People call in, they're like, well, we have six things that this machine is doing for us that we would never, never expect because people are sending us business. Right. So to your point, versatility, the, the business is out there. You yeah. just got to find it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to jump into it here to finish things up, but this episode's final thoughts, jumping into the final thoughts of the week for all of us. My final thought is don't believe all the garbage out there right now. Believe yourself, see what your business is doing. Go out and get the work, uh, hit the streets, talk to people as, as Connor mentioned, just because you don't do it today doesn't mean you can't be doing it tomorrow. You know, you might be a little cabinet maker, but go after the closet business, go after the doors, the drawers. There's so many other things you can do with your business and having the right equipment will allow you to do that. But definitely stop stepping over dollars to pick up the pennies. Like we have discounts. There's a lot of specials out there right now. There's a lot of ways to save money right now. Waiting on a quarter point drop is a foolish thing to do right now. I'm just being bluntly honest, when it comes to this kind of equipment, that quarter point will not change your business. I, I will promise you will, you are putting a bigger financial risk on your business by not investing in it today than you are waiting on that quarter point drop. Mm -hmm. If that's, if that's where you're at and you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm waiting for the quarter point. Then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You're giving business to your competitors. That's my final thought. Yep. I mean, I just think people need to obviously listen to this episode and listen to what these guys have said. I mean, I even learned Agreed. something, listen to them, you know, like, yeah. Like we said before, people just probably don't know. Right? You don't know it. They don't know until you hear it from the experts. I mean, these guys do it every day. All day. I've been fortunate enough. I learned from them. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, so it's, it's just like you. I had the same conversation with these guys at one point and was like, wait, that's how the real world works? Like, yeah. you know, like you, you just, yeah. you know what you know in your personal life. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's no one's fault. It's just all you know. And, you know, yeah. here to help. And I guess that's my final thought. And sorry, hope you're done there. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pick up the phone if you have any questions. Um, call us, you know, I can, with a few simple questions to, you know, the customer, I can figure out, you know, give them ballpark payments mm -hmm. and, you know, they can figure out cash flow and stuff. It doesn't yep. need to be, oh, I got to get this application in to do this, to find this, you know, just pick up the phone and right. call us and, you know, we can get you, you know, pretty good ballpark on numbers and yep. you know, see if it works for you. If so. you need to get a hold of these guys, our website, go click on the financing tab and their contact information is right on the page. You can call, email, whatever you want. Mm. You don't have to put an app in just to talk to these guys. Like you can no. pick up the phone and call mm. them. And we yep. encourage it too. Yep. I would say scared money doesn't make any money. Right. That's the truest. I love that phrase because it's true. Like mm. having all this money in the bank because something might happen doesn't grow your business. No. Like 
be safe. I mean, don't don't be, be stupid. Yeah, We're don't not be stupid. Start throwing the money yeah. at things. Well, they said spend all my money. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't be dumb. We're here to um, help make calculated yeah, decisions. Yeah, but like that's exactly it. Find out what your next step is and, and take mm-hmm. steps towards that. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do everything you want to do in the first day, but put a game plan in place. Mm-hmm. When are you going to buy your next piece of equipment? When are you going to do it? What's your calculated steps? You know, how are you getting to be the company size you want to be? You know, you, you don't grow by watching, you know, I've always joked about the economy. The economy is never perfect. It's either too good to be true and you're <laughs> waiting for it to fail or it's not good enough and you're waiting for it to rebound. Like it's always doom and gloom. Right. And and everybody's going to tell you that either we're at the top or the bottom and either way, you're not in a spot to spend money. Right. Yeah. yeah. If everybody listened, you'd never grow. Like some of the biggest businesses that I know, some of the most successful business owners that I know grew during questionable times. Opportunity is yes. when others aren't spending the money. Right. Mm-hmm. These right now mm-hmm. is when people are buying equipment, doing things that others aren't willing to do, and they're going to steal the market. Mm-hmm. Right now, the business owners who are buying equipment and scooping up, they're preparing for taking the business from the people who are too scared to do it. Because when the other people start spending money on yep. the custom cabinetry and all that yep. more and more, guess who's got the machine yep. ready to go? Lead times, you got the control, you know how to do it, and you have the versatility. So, yeah, yeah for final th- thoughts, that's what we got this week. But, uh, yeah, I, I hopefully you guys learned something this week with it. But uh, as always, like I said, it, it's it's fun to meet with you two. Obviously, we appreciate both of you guys coming in. Um, Geneva Capital is always a blast. I know we got some barbecue waiting downstairs mm-hmm. for us. So as always, we appreciate each and every one of you listeners listening to us every week talk about things that a lot of times don't matter, but hopefully you find some humor in it and you've had some fun with us. But again, we appreciate you tuning in every week to another episode of Talking Shop. And as we said, if you got questions, go to our financing tab on the website, click on the button there. You can call these guys. Uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of them, call us and you can always reach us shopsaber.com. You can reach us at sales at shopsaber. Uh, again, we'll be there to help you. But uh, with that, I'm Brandon. I'm Nick. I'm Sam. And I'm Connor. Thanks for talking shop with Shopsaber.